When I moved to West Virginia for college in 2022, I can say that I knew very little about the state. The extent of my knowledge is that I knew there were mountains, mining, and West Virginia University. I'd never considered Appalachia as a culturally distinct region, however, and it wasn't until I took an English class in the spring that I was first introduced to Denise G Giardina. Denise Giardina is a West Virginian author who largely pioneered the idea of Appalachian writing. Through her entire life, Giardina has worked to bring awareness to Appalachia culture and her heritage, and her pride in her roots fueled her career as a writer and an activist. To start, Denise Giardina's childhood in the Black Wolf coal mining camp inspired much of her later work. Denise Giardina was born in 1951 in Black Wolf, West Virginia. The majority of Black Wolf's residents worked in the mines or for the companies that operated the mines. Her father was a bookkeeper and her mother a nurse. As a child, Giardina soaked up the storytelling that surrounded her. She read a lot, but the oral storytelling of the coal miners she lived alongside would cement her as a figurehead of Appalachian writing. In her short memoir, No Escape in the Booger Man, she writes, I was no prodigy who reads at age two or three and goes bored and superior to the first grade. My papa sang the violent pure tales of the mountains. When the Black Wolf mining camp closed, Giardina and her family moved to Charleston, West Virginia. Denise attended college at West Virginia Wesleyan College and graduated with a degree in history in 1973. She would later go on to get a master's degree in divinity from Virginia Theological Seminary as well. Through her writing career, Giardina's most notable works focused on Appalachia. Giardina's most famous notable works include Storming Heaven, published in 1987, and The Unquiet Earth, published in 1992. Both works follow the narratives of coal miners trying to make it in the unforgiving conditions of the mines and the fight for labor rights and unionization in West Virginia. Her writing style was distinct to herself, and she often used regional dialects and language to authentically convey the characters. One extreme example of this convention is seen in her memoir, No Escape in the Booger Man. Giardina writes of the people of Welch, West Virginia. They'd be from foreign countries where they'd be princesses and dukes, only now they was in exile. Giardina intentionally chose to work outside the general American dialect and style conventions in order to accurately portray the language of her people. This is significant since often accents and dialects such as those seen in West Virginia are scorned as unprofessional and speakers are often seen as being incompetent. The success of her works allowed people outside of West Virginia to begin to understand Appalachian culture and the hardships and history of its people. Denise Giardina's work doesn't stop with her writing, however. Giardina is an activist for environmental justice in addition to her writing. She has raised awareness about the environmental consequences of mining in West Virginia, which hurts the forest, the landscape, and the people. Despite being incredibly proud of her heritage in the mining industry, she still acknowledges that the practice has devastating effects. In 2000, she ran for campaign for governor of West Virginia. Even though she lost, the Mountain Party, an offshoot of the larger Green Party, formed because of it. Denise Giardina continues to make a lasting impact with her writing and activism. Giardina has still been writing and working to this day. Much of her work today focuses on activism and awareness, specifically mountaintop destruction due to mining. In an interview with Still Magazine, Giardina said, how do we be mountain people without mountains? How do those of us who love mountains live among our neighbors who have sold their souls? Giardina is a voice for her people. Through her writing and her activism, she's committed her life to bringing the people of Appalachia onto a larger platform. Her novels are poignant and enduring, telling the tales of an often undervalued people and the reality of living in such a wild and wonderful land.